Hi, welcome to Adulting with a Disability. My name's Martha and today I want to tell you a bit of my NDIS story and the journey I've been on so far. If you haven't subscribed, go hit the subscribe button, tap on the bell and you'll be notified of new content. My NDIS journey started before NDIS. I applied for CSP, I applied for the Community Support Program, and I was accepted, and so I had six hours of support worker a day, Monday to Friday. This was good in that I, at the time, needed support as um, I had been through a lot of medical issues and Andrew needed a break. So, yeah, instilling six hours a day was really helpful. We did cooking, cleaning, we went out and about. Um, and then when NDIS replaced CSP, it was an automatic rollover and the agreement was that they wouldn't take anything away from what we already had. So when I went, when it rolled over into NDIS, I was okay. I then needed to apply for a wheelchair, which was a nightmare. Um, there were things missing from my report. And as you may or may not know, NDIS does not have to communicate with you. So there was no way of knowing what was missing. 18 months later, I got my wheelchair. I had never waited 18 months before. In the old PADP process, um, the longest I'd waited was six months. So the way that I found out what I needed for the report was that I got my local member involved in the Ombudsman and they kind of helped me sort out what was missing. And what was missing was that probably one sentence saying that even though I had an electrical chair, I still needed a manual chair to get onto flight and to access houses with stairs, which really is a no-brainer. Anyway, so I had a two-year package from NDIS as my second round. And because I had to get all these extra reports written for the wheelchair, it ate up into my improved daily activities. And so I was in my second year of my second plan with no money for physio. I put in a change of circumstance in that I had no money for improved daily activities and it was rejected. The reason that I said I needed more money was because it had been eaten up by report. And I guess they just thought too bad. I had also applied for a bed because there were issues with my sleeping that they, the doctors felt a bed was necessary. And I was ringing NDIS week in, week out to find out what the bed was up to and no one was getting back to me. Eventually, I went into the local office and I was lucky to speak to a planner and I just shared my story of how my change of circumstance and needing more money for improved daily activities had been rejected, which she thought was not the right thing. Also, the fact that I had been ringing, they had no record of me ever having rung and they didn't receive any messages to ring me. 
and so I spent an hour with this planner, shocked I guess, and out of hope and distrust, and I just said, you know, I feel worthless. And she assured me that she would fix it. So the bed was approved. The improved daily activities funding was increased. And all in all, I just ended up with a brand new plan. Um, one year into my second plan. So the plan was stopped. I got a new plan. I went from being plan managed to self-managed. And I got my bed, I got improved daily activities, daily activities that I needed and everything else. Along that journey, I also started working and I was really overwhelmed by having support workers in my house for six hours a day. And I thought, how can I change this so that I still get everything done that I needed to get done? But it wasn't overwhelming for me, and I could do my work. So I kept the Wednesday six hours, and we still do cleaning. And then every other day, I've reduced the hours just so my needs are met, like personal needs, feeding, um, be watered. I'm not a plant, but I like to be watered. And I put in place a linen service, so my washing was done, and also a meal delivery service, so that my meals were prepared and delivered, and I just paid for the cost of the food itself. And it took the burden off me in that I had more free time to do my work, I could think for myself. I had space to think and I just had the help I needed when I needed it. And look, I think I've found a happy medium and I'm happy with the plan that I have at the moment. And it should serve me well. So I have NDIS working for me now the way that I need it to. And I wanted to share this so that you can get some ideas around what you can put in place. And it doesn't all have to be done by a support worker. Anyway, I hope this has been helpful. If you have any comments or questions, let me know. Otherwise, I'll see you next time. Bye for now.